it's Dave. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, so I opened today with a Steve Lukather um, clip because that's one of my favorites. But actually a friend of mine requested that I learn the solo. So I had to learn it and then I had to find a backing track for it. And uh, as you can see by the end of it, I got pretty loopy. Um, but uh, it was a fun one to play. Today I wanted to do a little topic on some of my favorite things. And uh, this is my favorite Strat currently. It's my yellow Warmoth Strat that I had made. Um, I put the uh, 70s logo on it, pretty much like a, like a, uh, like a Dan Smith. Um, I have the clay dots on ebony. I have the deluxe two-point floating tremolo from Fender on it. These are DiMarzio uh, Pro 54 in the bridge, DiMarzio Area 58 in the front and middle. This turns the neck pickup on so I can have it uh, like a telly sound in the in the five position, although Fender calls this one, I call it five. And then in the four position, I can have all three pickups on. Um, I have a treble bleed on it. It's got a uh, like a fat V-neck. It's called the Clapton um, Clapton neck shape from Warmoth. And it's uh, currently my favorite guitar. And I'm a Strat guy because basically I'm a, uh, I'm a utilitarian by nature. I believe in function over form. Um, I love tellies too for what they do. Uh, and because of it, I see the beauty and the functionality more than like, you know, like I did a video with my buddies Les Paul. And Les Paul's are beautiful guitars. But... Um, that being said, I don't find them comfortable to play. Um, it's just a couple of things about Les Pauls I don't really care for, but they're great guitars. I mean, everything's about opinion and, and what you feel comfortable. Had I started when I first started learning guitar, had I started on that type of guitar, I'd probably think the Les Paul's the greatest guitar. But because I grew up on a Strat style guitar, um, that's what I got used to playing. So that's what I like. This has a 10 to 16 radius, I believe, that Womith uses. And I have the jumbo, the biggest frets you can put on here, stainless steel. Um, but I, uh, I love this guitar. This right now is currently my favorite. This one and my white one, uh, which I recently had uh, Wolf in Boston, um, who's across from like the Berkeley School, uh, do the scalloping on. You can see um, here these frets. I don't know if you can see that. But those are scalloped. And they're basically scalped just so I can grab the string a little easier. It's a little nicer. This is just uh, currently my favorite guitar. You know, recently a friend of mine, uh, he called me and was asking me if I've heard of the Bogner Harlow pedal. And of course, I looked at it. Now I want it. So uh, I don't own it yet, but uh, I do have a few favorite pedals. But that one looks like it would really be nice. And a few favorite amps, I should say. That would really be nice in front of my Rectoverb because, um, you know, the, the, I have a dual rectifier also, and I, I've said this for years, you know, I love Mesa amplifiers, and I love Fender amplifiers, and to me, Fender has, like, the greatest clean, and Mesa has the greatest overdrive gain sound that I like. That being said, Mesa's clean sound is absolutely atrocious, and Fender's gain sound is terrible. So with the Fender, I'm using pedals to to make the thing overdrive better and, and, and use pedals. And on the Mesa, I'm, I use, currently I'm using the Animal by J Rocket to, with a uh, Wampler Ego Compressor to uh, make it brighter. And uh, it actually worked and cut out some of the mids. And it's working. It's, it's definitely sounding um, like a lot nicer clean channel. And then I turn it off when I go to the gain because you just don't need it. Right now, I'm still kind of getting used to it, so I might replace the Wampler Ego Compressor with the Harlow by Bogner, just because it's it's a little less compression, and it has like a, a real nice tone to it, so I feel like I'm going to be going to that soon. Um, but I'll, I'll keep you posted on that if that's what I feel like doing. You know, it's funny, uh, being a utilitarian, I'm also very much into, like, I, uh, I like guns, and I go to the range... Um, as you know, as I've said in previous videos that I used to work with LAPD, we did this whole program in uh, South Central, um, getting kids out of gangs and getting them um, on the straight and narrow 
and, and doing it through music. And it was a very cool program. We got a lot of young kids involved. And it was great. It really was. It felt good to do. And because we were going into some really questionable schools and areas, um, the chief at the time asked me to take the gun training with the LAPD so I could carry while I was doing it. So I, I did, and um, and it, it was great. It, it was a lot of fun. We got we shot shotguns. I brought my forty five. I have a Glock twenty one. It was very cool. We had a lot of fun that day. But um, and then of course I was able to carry when I was working with them. Uh, now in Massachusetts, I can carry. I have my license. I've been trained by other institutions as well. Um, but uh, it's some. If you haven't gone shooting and it's something that you want to try, it's definitely enjoyable. If you're against guns, just ignore this. I, I don't care. You know, everyone has an opinion on things, and you could be against strats. I just don't care. I don't care. But uh, you know, so I just uh, recently I picked up a new uh, Glock 36, and uh, and I love it. I'm going to take it to the range in the next couple of days. And like the Stratocaster, the Glock is basically like a utilitarian gun. This is my Glock 36. Show you it's cleared. Let me take this out. Nothing in the chamber, nothing there. Okay. So this is the Glock 36. Very small. It's got a single frame. So it's very, very small in the hand, which I like. And it's also, if you're carrying it, it's very small on your body. Um, it holds six in one, I believe, if you put one in the chamber. But but it's basically holds six, and it's a 45 ACP. Um, but these guns are like very reliable. They're basically like to me, this is like the Stratocaster of guns. It's uh, the most basic. You can interchange certain parts. It's very easy. It's very easy to take down. If I wanted to take this gun down, shoot it, aim it out of place, blah, 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 go like this, and now the gun is taken down, and I could take, you know, this out and the, the barrel out, but. You don't care, so whatever. I also enjoy smoking cigars. Um, and uh, I don't have my favorite cigar to show you. Romeo e Giulietta Short Churchill from Cuba. That is like my favorite cigar. They go for about 25 30 bucks a stick. So at this point, I'm not running out to buy a bunch of them. Very hard to find. Um, when I travel to England, I smoked them there. That's great. You know, but uh, until uh, the, the thing with Cuba ends, it's very hard to get. Uh, but I do have a favorite cigar that is legal to smoke in the United States, and that is the El Rey del Mundo Flor de Laneza. Uh, now, this is a cigar created by Frank Laneza, who's like a famous roller that came out of uh, Cuba in like 61. And I believe these are made, like, probably in Honduras, I believe. Um, but, yeah, this is a great cigar by uh, El Rey Del Mundo. And you can buy these on JR Cigar. They're great. They're not paying me to say this. This is just what I enjoy. I think, other than the, if, in other words, if um, Romeo and Julieta Short Churchill's not available, this is what I, my go-to cigar. It's a great cigar. Um, it's excellent. There's a couple of others that I really like. The Hoyo de, Monter uh, de Monterey, Doc Sumatra is nice. But this is one that I really like. And uh, if you smoke cigars and haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. I think you'll like it. They make it in this wrapper and also in a Maduro, which is nice. Yeah. Um don't really have a lot to discuss today I just uh, thought I would come on and I got my new gun so I figured I'd show it and people who like it like it and if you don't don't oh you can see also somebody commented like on the bottles they thought they were Snapple that's polar Kohler which is something you can only get in Massachusetts and being away from mass for so long I forgot they even existed but I love diet birch beer which is the empty one and then this one looks like Diet root beer, right there where my thumb is. And then behind that's like a diet chocolate fudge. They're all no calorie and also no sodium, which is what I like. It's not like drinking a Coke where you're drinking like a um, sweetener and salt. But, um, oh, also, 
I got my hair dyed, as you can see, so I'm, I'm feeling younger. I'm uh, losing weight, and uh, pretty soon the beard will go. As you can see, we kept some gray in the beard. But the beard, um, the beard will go when I get down within to 10, 10 pounds of my goal. Uh, I feel like that'll, that'll be that. Um, other than that, I would love to, uh, in, in the future, I have some things coming up where I'm going to do some, like, maybe some interviewing and have a, maybe a group chat thing on here. There's just a lot of things I have rolling around for what's what I want to do with this channel uh, and teaching stuff. For those that like my channel, I thank you very much. Um, please come back. I'll have always fun and new things to talk about. And for now, this is going to keep it short. Very good. Really, all it really does is tell us that there's some other laws of nature that we don't yet understand because our knowledge is limited. It's, it's always limited. There's always a little bit more. It's sort of like thinking about that the magic of today is the science of tomorrow. You're right on target. You're right on the money. Everything you said. You hit the nail right on the head with your comments, what you're saying today. You're 150% correct.